Hey everybody, my name is Daryl Bear. Welcome back to My Mondays. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Bifrost and how we can get Bifrost liquid to have colors inside of it that are kind of swirling together. So I did this motion graphics um, demo when we launched Maya 2016 Extension 2 and one of the examples I had in it was Bifrost being thrown on top of the Maiden Maya logo that had some EQ stuff happening. The EQ stuff was obviously done using the motion graphics toolkit and the Bifrost was done um, and some people asked, how are you getting the colors in the Bifrost liquid? So it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to share that with you in this presentation. It's also worth noting that in this example, I'm using the viscosity to make that Bifrost liquid not appear to be like water. You know, it's kind of cranked up a little bit, gives it kind of an almost thick, oily paint look. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that also. So let's go ahead and jump into Maya. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and jump into Maya and I will uh, walk you through the process here. So this is the actual emitter that I was using to generate that Bifrost liquid. It was just a few spheres that I kind of poly combined together and it was sitting off screen and I was just using that to kind of blast liquid out. For this demo, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just use the same emitter to just drop liquid on top of the Maiden Maya logo. So it's just kind of translating across the top of that and that's just to make the demo move along a little bit quicker. So to make the Bifrost liquid, very straightforward. All you have to do is grab the object that you want to emit from, go up to Bifrost, create a liquid. Then with that liquid um, generated, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add into this my object that I want to collide with. So I'll hold down my Shift key and select the Maiden Maya logo. We'll go up to Bifrost and we'll just add that as a collider. And finally, what we want to do is we want to grab that Bifrost liquid one more time and add on to it a kill plane and just drop that kind of a little bit lower in, in the frame so that the liquid simulation doesn't continue to get pulled down by gravity and generate a larger size for the simulation to work in that we need. So we're just going to kind of kill that stuff off so that we can keep our sim times pretty quick here. So now that we've done that, the first thing I'm going to do is start tuning a few of the attributes on this Bifrost liquid. So we're going to go to the Bifrost liquid properties, and we're going to change that master voxel size. Right now it's too large to capture any of the detail that we want. So we're just going to drop that value down to something like 0.1. So this is a pretty good compromise for speed versus performance um, or versus detail for my demo here. Now, obviously, if I was doing my final render, I'd drop that master voxel size even lower to get more detail in my simulation. But for a demo, 0.1 is going to work just fine for the scale that we have here. So the next thing that we want to do is if we queue this guy up, you'll notice that what happens is the Bifrost liquid is going to only be emitted for the first frame there. You can see that that liquid comes down and it's not getting, get, it's not getting continuously dropped like a fountain, which is not what we want. So how do we fix that? It's really straightforward. We'll just go over to the Bifrost emitter properties. And on that emitter, I'm going to go ahead and emit continuous. So now if we cue this guy up and we play it back, what's going to happen is obviously as these guys start to knock frames out here, you can see that that emission just continues and it does exactly what you'd expect. So that's all well and good. So how do we get the color on here? Well, the way we're going to get the color on here is we're actually going to use some of the remapping options that Bifrost has to remap things. So you can see by default, what Bifrost is doing is it's displaying the color channel based on velocity, right? So if we go ahead and we switch this over to, and I'm, I'm now looking at the Bifrost liquid shape. So the Bifrost liquid shape, if you haven't worked with Bifrost a lot, what the Bifrost liquid shape does is it, just, it adjusts how the viewport is displaying your sim, right? So this is this is great, but it isn't the same as what's going to render, right? So keep in mind that the rendering attributes are going to be slightly different or, or derived from a shader, and the Bifrost liquid stuff that we're playing around with right now is all just how viewport 2.0 displays the information, which is good because a lot of times you want the display in your viewport to be more of a diagnostics mechanism than you, than you would want in the render. So that's why they're broken into two different parts. So we could change it from you know points to spheres, or in this example, we're just going to display the actual voxels in our viewport. Now that's cool, and you can see that as I start to scrub through this, you know that, that basically is getting it's color derived from velocity, which is pretty pretty cool, right? Like, you know, the faster that it moves, the the wider it gets in the areas that are slow, like where it's sitting on top of that Bi Maiden Maya logo, you know, it's kind of just hanging out there and not moving very, very quickly. So, well, how do we how do we make this look like it's multiple colors, not based on velocity, but those colors that were swirling together? Well, what I was doing, instead of using velocity to drive my color channel, was I was using density. And this is really, really cool because basically we can hijack that density attribute and we can paint um, at, at, a, at a vertex level on the emitter 
different density values, and that's all I did. So let's check that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this over to density. Now, if we go back and look at that emitter, you'll notice that the emitter property's density value is set to 1,000. This is really key with Bifrost. You can have different emitters, or actually even the same emitter, have different density values, and it's going to behave correctly. You know, think about times where you have liquids that have different densities, something like paint that hasn't been stirred in a long time. The heavy stuff settles to the bottom, and the light stuff rises to the top. With Bifrost in the liquid simulations, when you have multiple densities, it will do the same thing. And we're going to be using this density, which by default has a value of 1,000, to, to basically drive the color of our liquid simulation. So how do we do that? Well, it's really straightforward. All we have to do is go back to frame zero. We'll just hide this guy for now. And we'll grab this piece of geometry. We'll frame it on that guy. So that, again, is just a few spheres that I just kind of, kind of pushed and pulled on a little bit. And then I poly combined together. That was my actual emitter for that QuickTime movie that we saw. And what we're going to do is we're just going to paint density values at a vertex level. So if we right click on top of this guy, go down to the Bifrost tab, you can see that we can paint density. We can paint a bunch of stuff, right? So I'm going to paint density on this guy. So when I do that, it brings up my density brush here. Now, the first thing we want to do is just make sure that we get everything flooded out to a value of zero because I may have painted values and I forgot. So we're going to flood that to a value of zero. So the next thing we're going to do is this, this value right here, these density maps are multipliers on top of the density value that's set at the emitter level, right? So the emitter had a density value of 1,000. So if I put my color value to 0.8 and I paint some areas of a range of, at 0.8, that essentially means these guys are going to be uh, a density value of 800. And it's a little hard to see what's going on with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my display section for the paintbrush tool, and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to clamp my min-max display. So right now, if it's a value of zero, it would be black. If it's a value of one, it would be white. I'm going to say, you know what? If it's a value of 0.8, it's going to be black. Or I could even say something like 0.6, it's going to be black. So now my 0.8 is sort of in, in, a, in a range of gray here. So it just makes it a little easier to see what's going on. Now, when I painted my objects, I didn't just flood each one of these little um, spheres with a color. I actually had some sections that were, you know, a value of one on this sphere, maybe a value of 0.5 over on the tail end. I painted multiple values on each sphere. But for the demo, I'm going to make each sphere be unique in its color just so it'll be a little clearer what's going on here. So then we'll set a, a, a value of 0.6, and we'll just paint this guy over here, like, you know, something like 0.6. You know, that's kind of cool, and we'll kind of flood over here. And just for fun, I might just put a little dab of 0.6 over there. So now we've got our density values set. So we're really what we now have is a, an, an object that's going to be emitting 1,000 where it's white, a density value of 800 where it's um, kind of gray, and a density value of 600 where it is black. And let's just go ahead and hit our W key. We'll get out of that tool. And we're going to re -cue this guy up. Now, keep in mind, when you paint these density values, your simulation doesn't get marked dirty. It doesn't know to recache this guy out. So if we display our, our liquid here, we'll just go ahead and re-show re that guy. You can see that that sim is still there. It still didn't get marked dirty. So just, just keep that in mind. Like when you paint those density values, you got to give the solver a kick to know that it needs to recache. So what I'm going to do to give this guy a kick is just go back to those liquid properties, and I want to make this look a little bit more like goo and a little bit less like liquid or water when it comes down. So to do that, I'm going to go to viscosity, and I'm going to crank that viscosity up to something like a value of 30. Keep in mind that you could crank this viscosity up really, really high, and it would look like jello or honey. And the viscosity model is ridiculously accurate. It's very, very powerful. So um, that was new, I believe, 2016. So with that done... Let's go ahead and grab this guy. We'll hit Q on this dude, and we'll we'll resend out our simulation. So off it goes, and you can see that it, you know it's kind of doing this thing here. And what's happening is, if you keep in mind, the um, our emitter has a range of a thousand, right? So if we go back here and look at this liquid properties, we've set our voxel display to be tied to density, and we've got this remapping mechanism here. But the problem is, it's using a range from zero to twenty. So all we have to do is push this range up to something like 1,000. And as soon as we do that, now you can start to see, well, we're starting to get a sense of, you know, the dens different density values. And they were all kind of in, you know, the 0.5s, 0.6s. So if we just add a few color sliders in here just to make this do something that's, uh, that's kind of cool, you know, you maybe clamp that guy over here, kind of go in a little bit of blue in that area. 
And then just for fun, we don't really want any white. We're going to change that white slider to something that's, that's going to pop, something like that. So now you can see there's my color. Now I can adjust this ramp and adjust, you know, how soft I want these lines, or I could even turn those lines off and have them be very, very harsh. But this is all I did to, uh, to get that color coming in. So what does that do? Well, obviously we've got now, um, you know, we've got some cool stuff happening there, right? Pretty, pretty fun, pretty straightforward. And you can start to get a sense of, you know, all those colors sort of blending together. So what happens if we render this? Well, keep in mind, like I said previously, when we are playing around with the Bifrost liquid, the liquid shape, all this information that we're playing with right here is just in the viewport. So when we render this, it's rendering using the Bifrost liquid material. It's using the shader associated with that Bifrost. And obviously that's set up to look like liquid by default, which isn't what we want. So how do we get the shader to do what we want? It's really, really straightforward. All we have to do is grab this guy, jump back over to that liquid material. So on the liquid material, what we're going to do is we're going to change its transparency to be zero. So it's going to be no longer like um, liquid or glass. It's not gonna be solid or opaque. And we're gonna go down here and we're going to remap that color not on um, on the foam, but we're going to remap the color on diffuse. Very straightforward. So what we're going to say is we want our diffuse to be derived by density. We're going to jump into our density remap slider, just like we did on the um, liquid node, the liquid shape node. We need to set that value up to a thousand to get the range set appropriately. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just add in some ramps in here. So I'll just kind of hack this guy together. So we'll just do kind of red. And I don't remember what I did on the, on the, um, on the other one, but this will, you know, I don't know if I did red first green. I don't, I don't really remember what I did, but I know that I use red, green, and blue, or I think I use red, green, and blue, but we'll just throw some colors in here and, you know, do something kind of like, oops, let's just expand that guy out. So it's a little easier to grab something like that. So we've got, you know, our color range here and we can kind of, flip this guy around a little bit and do a render on this dude. And you will see now that our shader is kind of coming across properly. And, you know, I might need to play with these ramps a little bit more to get, I think if we flip over here to the backside, we'll probably see some of that other color. Um, oh, that's a very small little sliver. So I don't even know if that's ever going to show up. But you kind of get the idea. So you just sit here and you play around with these ramps and you you balance these guys out to get them to, uh, to show up where you want them to. And Within a few minutes, you can really get something that looks, you know, really, really quite cool. And you could actually copy the attributes from the other ramp. That's probably a better, a better approach is to remember the values that you set in your ramp and your interactive display and, you know, mirror those over to this guy so that you're getting a good sense of that, that color change. Let's just flip around here. See if we can see a little bit of color change on this guy on the front side. Hopefully we will. Yeah, there you go. You can see there's blue and the red kind of coming together there. So essentially that's all I did to ultimately get to something that looks like this. And like I said before, I kind of painted splotches all over those emitters to get the, the bands to be a little bit more, um, you know, more, more var variety in the bands and things like that. But I think the end result actually works out pretty well and looks kind of cool. And I, I love the way the colors kind of blend together as those density values sort of start to, to melt together and, and blur together and things like that. So that's just a quick example of how we can use Bifrost to do some really fun motion graphics workflows using that density attribute and the remapping ability of the density um, tied to the diffuse channel of a shader to generate this end look. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. If you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And thanks again for watching Maya Mondays. Cheers, everyone.